In this video, we will practice solving some related rates problems. Number seven, a baseball diamond is in the shape of a square with sides 90 feet long. A player is running from second to third base at a speed of 25 feet per second. This is second base, this is third base. He is 20 feet from third base. At this moment, at what rate is the player's distance from home plate changing in feet per second? This is home plate down here. Let's put some variables on the diagram so we can write some equations later. This dot represents the position of the player who's running in this direction from second base towards third base. Let's call the distance from the player to third base y. And let's call the distance from the player to home plate h. Let's write down the facts that we know. The player is running from second to third base at a speed of 25 feet per second. That means that y is changing at a rate of 25 feet per second. In other words, dy dt is equal to 25 feet per second, except should it be negative or positive? Well, this is a decreasing distance, so let's call it negative 25 feet per second. We are also told that at the moment in question, he is 20 feet from third base. So at this particular moment, y is equal to 20 feet. But what are we being asked to find? At what rate is the player's distance from home plate changing in feet per second? So we are being asked to find the rate of change of h, or dh dt. Well, now we need to find a relationship between h and y, so we can set up an equation. But this is a right triangle, so we can simply use the Pythagorean theorem. So y squared plus 90 squared is equal to h squared. Let's do some implicit differentiation and take the derivative of both sides to get um, dy dt and dh dt to appear. The derivative of y squared is 2y, but we are taking the derivative with respect to t, not y. So we have to do the chain rule and multiply by dy dt, the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of a constant is 0, so moving on. The derivative of h squared is 2h. And again, because this is h and not t, we have to multiply by dh dt, the derivative of the inner function. This is the chain rule. Ultimately, we need to find dh dt. That means we need to know the value of all of the other variables in the problem. We need this and this and this. Let's check our inventory and see what we have we see that dy dt is equal to negative 25. So we can definitely substitute negative 25 right here. We are being asked about the moment when y is equal to 20. So we can substitute 20 right here. So the only variable we are missing is h. But we can find h using the Pythagorean theorem. At the moment in question, remember that y is 20. So we actually have 20 squared plus 90 squared is equal to h squared. So this is 400 plus 8,100 is equal to h squared. So this is 8,500 is equal to h squared. So taking the square root of both sides, h is the square root of 8,500. So we can put that in for h right here. So let's go ahead and make these three substitutions. So we have this. Now let's divide both sides by 2 times the square root of 8,500. As long as you go ahead and include the units, this is an acceptable answer for a free response question. Just for fun, I am going to simplify this a little bit. And uh, that would be helpful if this were a multiple choice question. Of course, these twos will cancel out, so consider those to be gone. 
and that's going to leave me with my 20 times negative 25 in the numerator. In my mind, I'm thinking that the square root of 8,500 is the same thing as the square root of 100 times 85. That makes it obvious that this simplifies to 10 radical 85. 10 goes into 20 twice. 2 times negative 25 is negative 50. So we end up with negative 50 over the square root of 85. So here is a more simplified expression for dh dt. Number 8. A man who is 6 feet tall walks at a constant rate of 5 feet per second towards a light that is 16 feet above the ground. At the moment when the man is 10 feet from the lamppost, how fast is the length of his shadow changing in feet per second? Let's label the diagram with numbers and variables so we can set up an equation later. We were told that the man is 6 feet tall and that the light is 16 feet off the ground. We are going to need a variable for the length of his shadow, so let's go ahead and call that s. And we will need a variable for the distance between the man and the lamppost, which we will call x. Other than what is already labeled in the diagram, let's make a list of the facts that we know and what we are trying to find. For example, we know that the man walks at a constant rate of 5 feet per second. So which variable is changing at 5 feet per second? That would be x that's changing. So we are being told that dx dt is 5 feet per second. But let's call it negative 5 feet per second because this distance is decreasing as he walks. What else do we know? At the moment in question, the man is 10 feet from the lamppost. So at the moment in question, x is equal to 10. What are we being asked to find? How fast is the length of the shadow changing? In other words, we are looking for ds dt. The next step is to find a relationship between x and s. I bet we can use similar triangles. This problem involves two triangles. We have this large outer triangle shown now in purple. We can draw it separately like this, but we need to label this bottom side as x plus s because it represents the total of the distance between the man and the light post and the length of the shadow. And then we've got the small inner triangle shown here in red that can be drawn separately like this. Similar triangles will help us write an equation because we can set up a proportion in the form small over big is equal to small over big. So for example, um, looking at the s, this is a side of the small triangle, and that corresponds to x plus s on the large triangle. So I can set up my first ratio, small over big, as s over x plus s. And then I can do another small over big ratio with the 6 and the 16. So this will equal 6 over 16. Uh, I always like to reduce this fraction. It's not strictly necessary, but I like smaller numbers if I can get them. So s over x plus s is equal to 3 over 8. I think I will cross multiply so I don't have these fractions anymore. So I'm going to multiply these two and these two and set those equal to each other. So I will have 3 times x plus s is equal to 8s. Uh, doing the distributive property, I have 3x uh, plus 3s is equal to 8s. I'm trying not to let my s's look like 5's. 
Subtracting 3s from both sides, we get 3x is equal to 5s. So we needed a relationship between x and s, and here it is. Let's take the derivative of both sides with respect to t so that we can make dx dt and ds dt appear. So the derivative of 3x is just going to be 3 dx dt. Similarly, the derivative of 5s is just going to be 5 ds dt. Since we know that dx dt is negative 5 feet per second, then this becomes 3 times negative 5 is equal to 5 ds dt. Dividing both sides by 5, we are left with negative 3 equals ds dt. So we now know that the rate of change of the shadow length is negative three feet per second. But we have to be a little bit careful here. They asked us how fast the length of the shadow is changing. So that's a key word that means that we actually need to find the speed, which does not include direction. So the speed is simply going to be three feet per second without the negative sign. Part B, how fast is the tip of his shadow moving in feet per second? Note, how fast is asking for speed, not velocity. Let's introduce a new variable y to represent the distance from the tip of the man's shadow to the lamppost. As the man walks towards the lamppost, the tip of his shadow moves as well, and the length of y decreases. So the velocity of the tip of the shadow will be dy dt. However, because we are asked for speed, if the velocity turns out to be negative, we will ignore the negative sign, and that will be the speed. Let's make an inventory of any quantities that we've been given or quantities that we found in part A. For example, in the setup, we were told that the man walks at a constant rate of five feet per second. That told us that dx dt was negative five feet per second. It was negative because x is decreasing. We were also told that the man is 10 feet from the lamppost at the moment in question. That means x is 10 feet. Also, at the end of part A, we calculated that ds dt was negative three feet per second. Look at the variables that we have in this inventory. We need to find a relationship between y, x, and s. This will be pretty straightforward because we can see right away that y is simply x plus s. And that's it, that's the relationship. y is equal to x plus S. Let's differentiate both sides with respect to t, so we can make dy dt, dx dt, and ds dt appear. So the derivative of y is just dy dt, and the derivative of x is dx dt, and the derivative of s is ds dt. But we know that dx dt is negative 5, while ds dt is negative 3. So that means that dy dt is negative 8 feet per second. Since we want the speed, we will call it 8 feet per second. In AP Calculus, you should always summarize your answer with a complete sentence. So the tip of the man's shadow moves at a speed of 8 feet per second.